Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to discuss stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I am walking, um, walking downtown on my way to meet a friend. Feeling like an idiot. I don't normally do this walk and talk kind of thing with the camera, but a friend of mine texted me and he said, Hey man, I want to buy a pipe and I would like to have your advice on which pipe I should buy different kinds of tobaccos. He'd never smoked a pipe before, or maybe he had, but never been into the hobby. And so I was going to meet him downtown, go to the local tobacco store. I actually have a pipe to give him. Um, I told him that, you know, don't go buy a pipe first. Let me give you one, and you can see what you think of the hobby. But then I was thinking, hey man, I've got a YouTube channel, so I should probably film this. This would be interesting for people, for new pipe smokers. Um, here we go. Very large truck. Uh, just trying to get a friend into the hobby, helping them ease into the hobby. So I'm gonna go downtown, I'm gonna meet up with this guy, we're gonna go to the local tobacco store, and we will see what we see. Ridiculously beautiful day in the mid-February. finally arrived and he can see me holding my phone up. Do you mind if I film you at all? Not a problem. I was just thinking this would be very good for the channel because yeah. you're starting out maybe smoking pipe for the first time. You want to just walk your bike down there? Or? Yeah. yeah works with me. All right. This is my friend Chance. We're heading to the tobacco store. So we're heading down to the Senate smoke shop. What uh, caused you to want to explore the idea of indulging in the pipe smoking hobby? Uh, well, I'm leaving the cigarette. Ah. And, uh, I do like tobacco still. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's relaxing to smoke a cigarette. And work. Right. Um, on a break. And, uh, it's not something I necessarily want to give up. But uh, the health benefits of leaving cigarettes. Definitely. So, uh, I've been almost two years now since I stopped smoking cigarettes. So you're quitting cigarettes entirely? That's the plan. Yeah, it'll be better for me as a you know, daily cycle. I could use the uh, capacity. Definitely. So, See, yeah. for, for those of you who don't know, though, when I go out and drink with Chance, he gives me cigarettes occasionally. I still, you know, I don't smoke by myself, but when I go out and drink, occasionally I'll have a cigarette. And now this will not take place anymore. We'll have to bring our pipes with us when we go out. Perfect. All right, so let's head into the tobacco store. We are approaching the Senate Smoke Shop in Bellingham, Washington. And so Chance and I are in the Senate Smoke Shop right now. I was actually looking through some of the cigars um, at the Padron. I was recommended to buy some by uh, Suffolk Bumpkin, who you should check out if you've never seen his channel. Excellent channel, does a lot of pipe smoking and some cigar stuff as well. But I'm buying a Padron cigar. Um, which I'm going to try to smoke on the channel at some point. And now Chance is looking through some of the bulk tobacco blends, and we're going to go over there and check that out. Do you see anything interesting there, Chance? Yeah. Oh. What is that, nougat? So that's an aromatic. Yeah. Now, have you ever smoked a pipe before, ever? I smoked with you once. Oh, you did? Yeah. I can't remember what we smoked. It was definitely not an aromatic. So did I explain that to you, the two major differences? There are... Aromatic tobaccos, which are heavily flavored for the most part. So you'll get things like cherry and vanilla and um, this one. Nougat is a burley and black Cavendish. So the Cavendish and the burley are usually the kinds of the varietals of tobacco that they use. And then a topping is added. Um, but I usually smoke non-aromatics, which are... There, there's always some flavoring added, but they're not obvious. You know, you can't really detect any of the flavoring. It's supposed to be more of a natural tobacco taste. Um, so I would recommend, I'm trying to think of something just right off the bat. They do have a blend here called um, Luxury Bullseye Flake, which I like quite a bit. It's around here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Bullseye Flake. It's a 
in coin form. You can see the little rolls there. But it's a vapor, so it's a, not a really strongly... Um, yeah, I take a whiff there. It's not a lot of Kia blend, so it's not super strong, but it has a little bit of a spice to it. Um, it's tasty. I might recommend something like that. And then I have a couple English blends that you can try out as well. Um, so yeah, I would think some sort of, maybe get an ounce or, some, ounce or two of something, and then some pipe cleaners, a pipe tool, and I've got a pipe for you. All right, let's do it. Uh, okay, so you need the pipe cleaners, you're getting some tobacco, some kind of a light English blend, and then you'll need a check tool uh, for cleaning out your pipe, and for when you're smoking the pipe, you need to be able to tamp. Um, and then maybe a wind cap, if they have any in here right now. Let's take a look. Okay, yeah. You need one of those check tools, definitely. Okay. And they have pipe bits. Do you guys have any little wind caps right now? Okay. Yeah, that's no problem. No. All right. So you're ready, Chance, to purchase your first pipe tobacco? Yeah, and he needs a, a check tool. Oh, great, yeah. Perfect. So a successful trip? Very successful. You got some tobacco, you got a pipe tool, you got some pipe cleaners. I've got a pipe for you. I picked up a Padron cigar, know nothing about them, but I was told to get those, and the tobacco store guy seemed to think that it was a good choice. So, now we're going to find a place and we will load up our pipes. All right, Chance and I have been wandering around the town looking for a place where we can smoke our pipes in peace without being accosted by crazy homeless people and such or busybodies telling us not to smoke. We are in a park where it's technically illegal to smoke, but who cares? We're gonna try anyway. Chance, I have for you. Ah. This is a pipe I reviewed on the channel. Some of okay. you might recognize this. The Mr. Grog pipe. Um, so it's fairly new, it hasn't been smoked very much. Okay. I thought it smoked quite well, actually, but it's made of cherry wood as opposed to briar wood, um, which doesn't really make any difference um, okay. in terms of the way it's going to smoke and everything. And I've also provided a brand new pipe bit. I cleaned the stem with alcohol so you won't have my cooties all over it. I didn't put this on because basically you have to go and like slobber all over it in order to get it to fit okay. over the edge of this thing. You may not even want to use the pipe uh, bit, but it's a plastic stem so it's a little hard on the teeth. Okay. So if you want to put that on, you may. Interesting. And I brought my own pipe here. Slobber on that, slobber on the stem, and then you'll probably be able to stretch it over there. So Chance has purchased his check tool, which was like, what was that, like four something? Yeah. Online yeah, they're right about right a buck, you know. Wow. So. Okay. Um, and you got a blend, it's called Morning Blend, and it's sort of similar to Early Morning Pipe, I would say, by Dunhill. I'm not sure who makes this particular house blend for my local tobacconist. And then I also brought, I brought some Frogmorton Cellar, um, which most of you know is a kind of a mild English blend as well. You might want to take a whiff of that. Yeah. And then I brought some Dunhill Nightcap, which is a much stronger English blend. So you can shove your nose in all of these and kind of see what you think. Hmm. I like that. That's probably about the same strength as that one there in terms of Latakia. Okay. Definitely a bit fuller. Yeah. So I think I'm going to smoke Nightcap. Okay. Um, are you going to smoke your house blend or do you want to smoke one of these? Just go with that. Yeah. All right. So this has a little bit of, uh, it's packaged with whiskey stave cubes. So there's a wooden stave in there that imparts okay. a little bit of a whiskey flavoring to it. I like whiskey. A little bit of sweetness. So as we pack these, we're not going to get into some of the crazy esoteric methods. I use the Frank method a lot, which okay. involves like strange machinations. We're just going to use the good old pinch method. Uh, hopefully this isn't all going to blow away. There's a little breeze. What I do is just gravity fill a little bit of tobacco and just kind of tap the side, get it to fill loosely to the top. That nice room. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, feels nice. It's been in that jar for a very long time. That's actually a nice aged version of uh, 
Rod Morton. That's probably two years old or so. Oh, wow. All right, so once you're about up to the rim, do one more pinch there. Okay. And you take your check tool and you lightly tamp down that first run of tobacco. So I'm tamped down to about halfway up the bowl now. Okay. So that's about as much as you want to tamp it. Yes. That's good. Then you fill it up again. Okay. Again, just kind of tapping using gravity. Obviously there are many, many ways to do this. This is just the way I, I use when I'm uh, not in the mood to do something a little more involved. So you get it up again, then you tamp it down with just a little bit more force. And so you want to be maybe two-thirds of the way up now, maybe a little more. Okay. Then you do it again. And this one I'll let run over the rim a bit because by the time I tamp it down, I'm losing tobacco. So then you do a bit more force. Pretty firm. And that should be your final amount. Sometimes I'll just throw a little bit more in there, but this is fine. Um, if you'd have less around the rim, you have less chance of darkening your rim with tar and such as you're smoking. Which is not the hardest thing to get off necessarily either if you have a smooth pipe. So you should test your draw now. You should feel a little bit of resistance, but not... It shouldn't feel just like an empty straw. It should feel like yeah. a straw that you're drinking soda out of, basically. Okay. Okay. Then we do the first light. So I brought my Zippo out because it's a little windy. Oh, baby. Just filled this thing. Just let some <laughs> of that fluid leak out, too, so it doesn't get on my tobacco. All right, so I've got the charring light where I've charred the top of the tobacco. You can do that now. It's gonna swell up a little bit as you go. Okay. So you are you have it in your mouth, you're sucking as you do it. Okay. And make sure you're moving it around, you're not leaving it over the rim for any long period of time. Okay. Okay. Now you want to tamp that charred patch of tobacco down so you have a nice kind of disc of ash. I should have brought an extra wind cap for you, but I didn't think about it. And that is what's called the true light. You light it again once you've done your charring light. You might tamp it down a little bit again just because it likes to swell up. I am going to throw a wind cap on mine. There you go. So you have smoked a pipe once with me. Yeah. Um, so you remember the whole procedure is basically every once in a while you're going to want to tamp that disc of ash down to keep the ember in contact with the unburnt tobacco as you go down through the bowl. Absolutely. If it gets a little wet, you might have to shove a pipe cleaner in there, suck up some of the moisture. That one smokes pretty dry though so far. And it's not a really wet day out here, so it shouldn't be too bad. So what's your initial... That's tasty. Good stuff. Yeah. From the first time that we smoked together, it was definitely a little bit harsher than I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Cigarette tobacco, pretty different. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, it's nice. It's kind of... Uh, it's a little bit mellower than before. Yeah. I like this. The thing you'll notice as you start trying more pipe tobaccos, if you do end up smoking a pipe, is that mm -hmm. you'll end up like... It's very easy to fall off the precipice of being like a coffee snob or a beer snob or someone who's like a sommelier or something where you start picking up these insanely subtle nuances of different blends and you'll notice different different varietals of tobaccos, different ways those varietals have been cured and grown. It all makes a difference. You'll start noticing a lot of those different things and some blends that you may not may not have liked, maybe you think were lacking in flavor initially, you might find actually that's not the case once you okay. develop more of a palate for everything. It's a very 
contemplative thing where you can sit. When you smoke cigarettes, you're just uh, yeah, you're sucking it in. Yeah. You're getting, you're you know what you're getting out of it. But with the pipe tobacco, you definitely have. There's way more room for pondering what you're doing and what it tastes like, and mm -hmm. it's quite rewarding after a while. Just make sure you don't accidentally inhale because it's good. Yeah. after coming from cigarettes, it's uh, pretty damn harsh if you let it get into your lungs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're going to enjoy our pipes. At the end, we might do a little tutorial for Chance about cleaning the pipe, um, and then we'll probably wrap up. You know, when I was waiting for you on the corner, three different transvestites walked by. Hmm. Which, you know, you see you see transvestites every once in a while, but, like, but three in a row. And not, not in a row, like it's not like they were together. Right. There's one transvestite, <laughs> and a couple people there, there was another transvestite. Yeah. Or some of them may have been pre-ops, or they may have been transgender, I'm not sure, but they were men in women's clothing. Yeah. Was, it, is all I could really tell from just, you know, not asking the questions, but. Bellingham is growing up. We have three transvestites now. I think we have more, but to see them all within the same five minute period. Uh, younger, older? One was, eh, I don't know, maybe late 20s. The next one was older, like maybe yeah. in his 50s. Okay. And then the one after that was hard to tell. Maybe in the 30s. Mm -hmm. Large men. Yeah. All of them, all three of them. There's this one fellow, lady. Depends on, you right. know, if they're transvestites, they're men, but if they're, you know, yeah, uh, who comes to my place at work and is, he is, uh, he's gonna be like six, six or something like that, just like tall and gaunt and uh, doesn't really like wear women's clothing that much, maybe like just a, a long jacket yeah, and uh, like this wig, I assume it's a wig, mm -hmm. and it's just like, gray or silver and it comes down to that well I've seen him before yeah, yeah. it's just very kind of scary <laughs> <laughs> I always feel sorry for people who I mean transvestite guys I think they just like wearing women's clothing it's not that big of a deal but the transgender who who feel female who want to be female who maybe will go through a sex change yeah. when they are like 6'6 six, six, and just with giant shoulders and yeah. bulky and everything and you always feel like you know no matter what you do you're not just you're just not gonna quite pull it off yeah and it's kind of sad it made me remember like in the early 2000s when I was down in LA and I was involved in the mod scene down there and the archetype was to be very slim slender wearing nice you know tight suits and things like that yeah and whenever there was a fat mod dude you know, like he was he was attracted to the subculture he loves the music he loves the fashion <laughs> But he's fucking fat, yeah. and you could just see the bitterness in their in their eyes at all times. <laughs> like they they were never going to match up to the archetype properly. Yeah, and then it felt kind of sad. They were very bitter people. It seemed like. That's and I was just like, just pick something else. Pick a different subculture. Absolutely. Or or lose some weight. But yeah, that's always my recommendation. But I can't really gain weight, so 
Who am I to say? It might be really hard. I don't know. You do ride a bike. That's true. I don't think I could get that. I'd hate myself. There's a park employee. I don't know if he's going to yell at us. I guess he's not really a park employee. Yeah. Well, you'd have your work cut out for you in this park if you were actually going to police. Which is a very recent law, too. Just in January, I yeah. guess, is when it went into effect. So, I mean... Um, yeah, that's kind of one reason why we picked this park is because 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 there are so many homeless people here, and they're all smoking constantly. Yep. Um, not always tobacco. Not always tobacco. Not always pot. You no. know, lots of things. Lots of things. <laughs> Crack, heroin. Yeah. Free base. Maybe a little meth sometimes. Who knows? How are you doing there? It does not seem to be producing. Went out. Smoke. Yeah. Give it a little tamp. Give it a relight. Okay. In windy conditions like this, you'll usually... The problem will be that it's burning too much and too okay. hot. Can't even light the lighter. I just filled it, so it should be good. It's a wind issue. It is picking up a little bit. There you go. Yeah. So what do you think? Can you see the? Can you see yourself doing this? Absolutely. On a regular basis. Definitely. I like it. And what would your young girlfriend think of this? She'd probably prefer this to cigarette smoking. Probably. She never minded that much. But uh, you know, cigarettes, there's like a, there's an aroma. It's all over you. I will have to say, I, even though I've never minded the smell of freshly smoked cigarettes, yeah. the stale cigarette smell is not fantastic, and the pipe smell never it never seems to get into that stale category that cigarette smoke does. Mm. Even some of the strongest English blends, I find them all delicious smelling, but yeah. even much after the fact, I've had people comment on you know smelling my clothes or smelling where I've been smoking, like, oh, you've been burning incense, or oh. what's this, like, people comment favorably on the smell, as Very opposed nice. to cigarettes, so. Do you typically smoke uh, all non-aromatic? All non-aromatic, mm -hmm. pretty much always. I have people request reviews for aromatic tobaccos, and I'm always like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, but I just never, I smoke pipes because I like the taste of tobacco. Yeah. I love tobacco. I think it tastes delicious. It's a beautiful, and I'll say aromatic because it is. It's an aromatic leaf. Sure. But, and I mean that in just terms of the fact that the burnt tobacco leaf has a beautiful aroma when it is burned. I don't, I don't like adding a flavor that's going to detract from the natural tobacco taste. And as I pointed out a thousand times, there's almost always a little bit of flavor added to tobacco blends, whether it be because they have to try to even out every blend because they have different props from different years and yeah. they have to try to recreate the taste of the blend every single year. And then there's also humectants, um, anti-mold um, agents and yep. stuff that they put in there. But in terms, I don't mind that as long as it's transparent and not readily detectable. When you start adding, throwing things on top of the tobacco, you can always taste, it always tastes like it's been added to the tobacco. You taste the tobacco and then you taste this thing sitting on top of it. You smell an aromatic that smells like, ooh, it's beautiful vanilla cherry or something. It never tastes the way it smells. It's, it tastes like you're burning some cherries and some vanilla and I don't know. It's just, I understand people, a lot of people smoke aromatics because they have wives, partners, whoever, who want to smell that as yeah. opposed to a lot of Kia blend, even though yeah. I think a lot of Kia smells amazing. But in terms of I don't, I don't want to get too down on it, because a lot of my subscribers enjoy aromatic tobaccos. I'm yeah. just not one of those people. Okay. But you, by all means, I've already, like, probably uh, influenced you against trying them, but try some. You might yeah. you might enjoy them. Yeah, I'll pick some up next time I go to the, uh, the tobacconist. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. It's like maybe a dessert. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure... There are some actually really good aromatics out there. I just don't... I haven't really taken the time to delve that much into them. I've had some that are decent, but... Yeah. When I enjoy these blends so much... So just a couple words of warning. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're smoking outside. 
always make sure you're feeling your bowl. If it seems like it's getting really, really hot, yeah. you'll want to just kind of put it aside for a little bit okay. and let it cool down. Mm -hmm. If you get a good breeze going, you can get kind of like a chimney where it can start just crazy, creating a conflagration inside. And that's when you could actually damage the wood, oh, okay. where it can get so hot that it burns the wood. Mm -hmm. How much does, how long, I should say, does it, uh, an average bowl last? Mm. It depends on what you're smoking, how dry the tobacco is, all sorts of different things can go into that and also how you're smoking it. But I'd say a bowl like that, you could make it last 45 minutes probably. Uh, um, I tend to puff a little harder than a lot of people, so my bowls don't last as long usually. But if you're just sipping and enjoying it, usually if I'm having a bowl at night after dinner, I'll fill a bowl up and it will last me the whole evening. But I'm not sitting there smoking it the entire time. Okay. Let it go out, relight it. Let it go out, out yeah. you know. Okay. The other thing about pipe tobacco is most of them don't taste horrible when you relight them. Okay. A lot of cigarettes are just yeah, not good. Absolutely. And some blends, not the greatest either, but okay. for the most part, you can relight a pipe tobacco. Is that guy is still staring at the ground. It Maybe looks like he's talking to something, too. It's probably one of those things where they drop their drugs. Oh, there's two of them, yeah. Yeah. And they're just like looking at every pebble to see if it's like. Where a... are my drugs? Is this my drugs? <laughs> This is not my drugs. Yeah, they lost their drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the frustration developing. I, uh, I was in California. I was in uh, Oakland once, walking around this park. Uh -oh. <laughs> and uh, I saw this, this homeless man find drugs, just randomly. Wow. And the look of happiness. And the very, like, sneaky look. He kind of put his foot <laughs> over something and, like, slid it back towards him. And yeah. Looked around. It's like, all grinning. Did it's, you see what kind of drugs they were? No. It was a, it's like a small baggie. It could have been anything, but he probably didn't know at first, but, or maybe, you know, it's probably a veteran drug identifier. Probably. <laughs> but, yeah, he was cute. I guess. <laughs> In a very <laughs> sad way. Yeah, it was sad. If you don't laugh. What a lovely day. Pool tomorrow? I can't. I've got a date. Absolutely. This girl who just like... I don't know how involved <laughs> I should get with this on camera, but... Uh, she's like a friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. And... I did not give her my phone number or anything. She yeah. got it from a friend. Okay. And then just texted me and was like, we're going to go out. And that's forward. Very forward. Was and she I, Facebook friends? She you've met her before? Met her before. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I went, all right. So we went and got a drink. And then shortly after that, um, I had felt like I had behaved like an idiot during the drink. Like I just realized I hadn't been very charming in my own opinion. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But then, like, the next day, she texted me and was like, I'm going to come over, and we're going to watch a movie. Oh, nice. And I was like, uh, well, I'm busy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe next week. So I guess that's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. What movie? I don't know. Hmm. Women have that power. If they're attractive. If I met some girl, or not even, didn't even really meet the girl, but... If I had a friend, if you had a friend who was female, okay. I was like, she's attractive, I want to go out with her, mm -hmm. and you gave me her phone number, and I just randomly texted her, was like, <laughs> you know who yeah. I am? We're going to go out. I think she would think that was kind of creepy. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if she didn't necessarily want to go out with you. But the attractive women just assume that you do want to go out with Yeah. I mean, they're right. Usually, yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs> See, these are the great contemplative uh, exactly. things that we can work out. Ah. Are you... Cleaning process. Yeah, you're probably still going, but... Probably. I don't know. Got a bit. 
I don't want you to have to dump your tobacco before it's ready. But it is usually important to clean your pipe pretty quickly after finishing because you don't give the tar and the oils a chance to solidify it. Okay. Ah, as soon as the sun goes behind the clouds, it's, uh, remember that it's February. All right, I think that's about it. You done? All right. So usually just tapping it out isn't gonna be enough to actually clean it, so that's where the check tool comes into its own. We've got this little scoopy here. Okay. And what you wanna do, oh, you still have to put it in there, but whatever. Yeah. Um, you're gonna scrape around there, and you wanna get all the little bits of unburnt toba tobacco, tobacco out of there. Okay. Dottle, as it's called, will stick to the sides. And what I do as well is give it a nice little scrape. You're developing what's called cake where as you burn, carbon deposits on the side of the bowl, it protects the wood a little bit as you're smoking. So when you have a fresh pipe, especially one that hasn't been treated with any sort of pre-carbonization process, mm -hmm. if it's just bare wood, you kind of want to be careful as you're smoking initially because you're building up this carbon layer around the bowl okay. that protects it more. So what you want to do when you're done smoking is I just give it a nice little scrape, not really hard, but you're trying to release all the loose bits of tobacco because they can get stuck to the sides of the wall and then when you put in your next bowl of tobacco, since it's already basically glued to the side, if that yeah. bit of tobacco gets lit, it can actually burn into the side of the bowl if you're not careful. Yeah. So you get all the loose bits out once around like that. And then you've got your pipe cleaners. This pipe is gonna be a little tough because it has a little bit of a bend. And then it also has room to put a filter in there, which we don't use, I don't use anyway. Yeah. Um, so when you're trying to pass a pipe cleaner, you might have trouble getting it into the bowl necessarily. So with this, you don't usually want to take the stem off right after you've been smoking. It varies depending on the pipe, but if it's, as the wood gets hot, it expands yeah. and it makes it tighter. You could crack the shank if you do that. I have some pipes where I can take it off and it's not a problem. This one is pretty tight, so you can try to pass a pipe cleaner right now. I don't know if you're going to be successful. Okay but you can kind of jockey it around a little bit, maybe. Let me try uh, one of my narrower pipe cleaners. Oops. So let's see. That's why I like having both sizes, because mm -hmm. some of the shanks are a little more. There we go. Uh, got it in there. So what I do, you know, just give it a little back and forth. When you pull the pipe cleaner out, you'll be able to tell how dirty it is, how much moisture is in there, how much tar and stuff. Yeah. That's not bad at all. So just maybe either end of the pipe cleaner. Okay. Give it a little go around. Then I just make a little loop, loop okay. hook, whatever, and just get the sides. And then that's about it. And then I might go, wow, wow, wow put a little saliva on there and get the rim. I okay. think you were down low enough that you probably don't have anything deposited on the rim. Yeah. So that's about it. And then as you smoke more, you might have to do more of a deep cleaning sometimes. Okay. Um, sometimes you'll want to treat it with alcohol. Oh. A pipe can get sour sometimes if you've been smoking it a lot and it hasn't had a chance to really dry out between smokes. You can get kind of an acrid sour taste. Yeah. And what you might want to do is get some grain alcohol or even like isopropyl alcohol is okay. You get it on a pipe cleaner, rub it in the bowl, rub it, yeah. rub it through the shank, and that'll kind of sweeten the pipe a little bit and get rid of some of that sour flavor. But usually if you let it rest enough, mm -hmm. um, again, this varies, but people recommend at least a 24 hour period. Um, if you smoked a couple bowls in a day in one pipe, let it dry out for 24 hours or so. That's oh. why people have different pipes for I different see. days, you know, and they rotate them. Yeah, as they go. Okay. Um, but I'm assuming you're not going to be just like smoking like a chimney right off the bat, so. Yeah. Wonderful. And that's about it. So you have witnessed my good friend Chance, his first, well, you smoked a pipe before, but yeah. procuring tobacco for the first time, kind of getting a little tutorial on how to smoke a pipe. So if you have friends who are interested in the pipe smoking hobby, you can send them to this video perhaps. We also have the Stuff and Things Guide to Pipe Smoking. That playlist answers pretty much every question. Some of those videos are kind of old, so I might want to redo some of them, but for the most part, the information is going to be accurate on there. And as always, you can leave me comments, ask me questions. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend, Brand.
Well, I can't say my send off here. <laughs> I've been your good friend Bradley, you've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things, having a pleasant smoke with my good friend Chance. I'll see you later.